shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Dukes Models, and in this video, we're gonna go pretty far afield from my usual subjects of aircraft and the occasional armor kit and ranting about the state of Bandai and Star Wars. But first, a quick story. So, about a week ago, Patrick Perales of MBK USA reached out to me and asked if I'd be willing to build a certain something. And this kit is a new kit, and it is a kit that is very, very far outside of my usual stalking grounds. But it looks like an interesting kit, and the parts count didn't look too drastic, so I said, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Uh, turns out there was a catch. <laughs> so this kit is hitting the market in mid-January, which it's currently January 6th, so about a week and a half or two weeks from now. And he wants it built by then. <laughs> and uh, the funny thing about that is the last time I built a kit in two weeks, it was a one 144 scale X-Wing, which if you've built one of those little Bandai kits, you know it's like 10 parts and they go together without any issue whatsoever. So I've got my work cut out for me. Now, what kit is this? You may have already guessed if you, you know, read the video title, but it is the new DOS work 172nd scale U9 U-boat. Holy shit. <laughs> now, before I get into it and sort of how, the, how this video series is gonna work and all that sort of stuff, two quick caveats. First of all, the last time that I built any sort of floating thing of any kind, I was probably 12, and that was Tamiya's CVN-65 Enterprise. So I have built ships before, but it has been a hot minute. And I really don't have any practice or post-return experience or any of the muscle memory or any of that kind of stuff around building ships. I know fuck all about wooden decks and deck railings and all the little photo etch bullshit that ships can entail, which thankfully this one doesn't seem to. So I'm pretty much in uncharted territory here. Granted, yeah, when I was 12, but that I don't really count that anymore because I barely knew what the fuck I was doing then, even less so than I do now. The second caveat is that I really don't know anything about World War One U-boats. I know they existed. I know that they stocked Allied shipping. I think they sank the Lusitania. Other than that, <laughs> you got me. Uh, I couldn't even tell you how they're different from World War II U-boats other than the fact that they look different. Pretty much, yeah, I am coming into this pretty blind and I'm choosing to take a bit of an ignorance is bliss approach. I'm not gonna rely on any research or anything like that. Basically, what's in the box is what I'm working on. So, with those two caveats out of the way, how is this gonna work? Well, I've got two weeks, not a lot of time. So it's definitely gonna be a, uh, you know, a slam, slam it together, get some paint on it, get some weathering on it type of build. And I'm currently envisioning probably three episodes. First episode will be Essentially a build slash build review Taking you know taking stock of the kit itself how it goes together how it's engineered detail fit, etc And when we get out of that there should be a completed or mostly completed u-boat sitting on the bench Part two will be about painting the damn thing uh, Which as far as I can tell is like black and gray and I think there's some white involved somewhere too, but pretty monotone uh, grayscale type of scheme, so Nothing too crazy there. Uh, I'm definitely gonna try to add some variation into the surface though, because nothing more boring than just a big old thing of gray and black, right? So if we can chop up that gray a bit, make the black a bit more interesting, awesome, let's go for that. Weathering and final details will be the third video. Uh, as far as weathering, again, I know fuck all about weathering ships, so I'm just gonna kind of fumble around. Details at the end. <sighs> I don't know what those are going to be. Uh, it might be like the conning tower going on. It's probably going to involve some rigging here and there. Uh, this thing has minimal rigging, but it's still more than I think I can handle in two weeks. But I want to try to at least get the main elements up. So that's where we're going. And uh, even though this was this kit was provided by Patrick for me to build, I will be just as bluntly honest with this kit as I am with any other. Uh, I've previously done this for him with the Tiger models ERC-90 uh, little pan hard 6x6 armored car that 
if you go and check out the stuff I put out for that, definitely had its ups and downs. It was a mixed bag of a kit. Some really great stuff, some really, really not great stuff. So I won't be afraid to point out where this kit goes awry, if it goes awry, and where it succeeds. And so, yeah, hopefully this will be fun. Uh, and if you fancy following a boat noob as they fumble their way through a rather sizable build, you've come to the right place. So let's get to it. Okay, let's have a look at this puppy. Big sturdy box. That's all I'm gonna say about that. So the fun thing about this kit is there is not much to it. We got two big ass halves of the hole here. Got one big screw here that includes the upper deck, the stand, dive planes, screws, bits of the conning tower, blah, blah, blah. Everything looks pretty nice. Pretty simple decal sheet. More conning tower. I think it's cool that you have the option of what sort of railing setup you've got here. You've got just the the metal post or you've got the canvas covering. The canvas covering is exceptionally well molded. I think I might go with that one because that'll be fun to paint. I think these are the internal braces for the hull. Yeah. And then one more sprue with a bunch of little details. Nice. We've got a book that's like glued into the bottom here. Well, I said I know nothing about U-boats. This could be the, uh, the cure to that. A book on the U-9. Background history, technology, crew, and the kit itself. Cool. Might have a look at that in a little bit. And finally, what look like the instructions. I'm just gonna get this big ass box out of the way. Okay, here we go. That's the kit. Very uh, wing nutty feeling instruction book here. It's probably the yellowed pages. Here's our painting guide. I like that we've got a wide selection of paint options here. We've got the RAL colors, we've got Tamiya, Mr. Hobby, H series. I would have liked to see Mr. Color instead, but whatever. Ammo, Vallejo, Humbrol, Mission. Sadly, no MRP. No AK real colors either, but I guess if you're gonna have ammo, you're not gonna have AK. Parts diagram. And then we've got the instructions. Nice good contrast with the blue here. I do wish that on some of these things it called out what the hell they were because there's a lot that I just don't know. <laughs> so there's some details here you can paint on the inside of the conning tower if you want, so I guess there's the option to have a hatch opened or something. Looks like the screw mounts, conning tower again. And again, that seems like it can go on later, at least from what the Andy's Hobby Headquarters build said. Dive planes. So what the fuck are, oh, these are turnbuckles, okay. Uh, looks like they go to various parts on the ship. Nifty. I think we might be able to do something with that. That could be fun. And then just little bits at the end. The conning tower railing is interchangeable, which is nice. And that's that. And then we get a look at the players involved on the back. Sweet. Okay, that's a quick look at everything in the kit. Let's start building the damn thing. So first, uh, I'm definitely going to school on Andy's build and kind of paying attention to the stuff that he found as far as tips and stuff along the way. And the first one was to build this stand first. So let me throw that together and we'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the stand together and I've got the holes kind of sitting on it. But first, I need to go ahead and get the torpedo doors dealt with and whatever this shit back here is. The sprue, <laughs> the one thing about it is it is a lot of length to deal with. So it makes it a little bit squirrely to get some of these things out. So quick cleanup on these. I 
found that these Infini, I think they're called the Zebra Sticks, but they work really well with this plastic, which cuts nicely, handles well, all that good stuff. Okay, so let's get this knocked out first. P11 goes over this thing. Now, even with my short time on station with this kit so far, I've noticed two small things in the instructions that kind of frustrate me. The first is, let's see, you know, it's a divert to show you. If you look at the painting guide. Up here at the dive planes, it looks like they have some gray and some black slash dark whole gray on them. But there's no good view of what that actually looks like. And it doesn't really go into detail about it anywhere else. So I'm hoping maybe when I get to them, you know, the way they're shaped will make it obvious, but so far I'm not seeing anything. The other thing is that this thing does have some rigging. As you can see on the main cover image here, but outside of the turnbuckle stuff around the dive planes, there's no provision given to map this out in any way, shape, or form. So I'm gonna look when we start putting these masks in and whatnot and see what it looks like, but that might be a bridge too far in my accelerated build schedule. So I just need to check and see if I need to deal with these ejector pin marks or not, and it looks like I do not. Thank you, DOS work. Was like glue and stuff from the back if I can get away with it. Okay, so those are ready. Now we need to get a fuckload of little spreader bars, and we need to get part B5. No, that goes in there just like that. Torpedo doors go up front. So this is a little bit tedious, but one thing I really like about this is all of these little things are deeper than the actual pegs here, and so you don't have to worry about really getting a clean cut or anything like that, or having you know a little bit of sprue gate on there throwing off your fit. Uh, doesn't matter at all. Just having to precisely clean up every single one of these would be a huge energy suck. Let's go ahead and commit to glue on these fuckers. Some of them definitely fit a bit more tight than others. Let's do the fun part. Long ass tweezers here. Yep, 
Hey now. Woohoo! That is fun hearing that smacking sound as these things connect. <laughs> what a sound. What a sound. Okay, we have a hole. Now I have to glue the damn thing. Okay. Let's start by gluing the front. This is actual shit we can contact right here. It's not even visible on the camera. So there's a lot of internal structure up here that I want to make sure gets closed up. You can see right down in this hole in here. We squeeze that, it comes together. So I'm going to flood that and take an actual brush. Flood the shit out of that area. Pinch that closed for a moment. I feel like there's going to be a lot of holding in this process. Alright, so this is where I say fuck it to this front part. Because I remember that we don't have any clear parts that we're dealing with. So we're going to hit this with some CA. I need three hands because this thing takes two to hold. Come on, cure up. Jesus. I know it's going to be invisible down there anyway, but. Next. <laughs> okay, so you get the gist of what's going on here. I'm going to go ahead and finish all this grip strength work, closing up the rest of the hole, and then we'll be back. Okay, so the hole is together. Overall, it went pretty well. Definitely took a bit more uh, grip strength than I was anticipating, but it's there. So let's slide that out of the picture for a minute and work on some deck detail. Okay, so here we've got what I assume is the exhaust stack for the diesel motor and the housing that it retracts to, I'm assuming when it's underwater so it doesn't flood or something like that. And that goes into deck this is going to be interesting because this part does not want to come back up once it's in there which is kind of dumb because I assume if it's on the surface it's going to have this thing out right Anyway, this part fits up under here just like this. Nice and simple. Let's go ahead and 
glue that. And it basically traps these little pins on either side of the exhaust stack itself and allow it to rotate. Now let's work on whatever these little C bits are. I have no fucking idea. Okay, so let's see here. We've got C5. C2 go together like so. Anyway, so sound off in the comments what the fuck these things are. I sure wouldn't mind. Okay. I think you're probably pretty solid by now. So it looks like these have no real key as far as how they go in. They just kind of plop in like so. Fuck, I have no idea what they're for. Maybe they're bird feeders. Or garbage disposals. Yeah, that's it. They're garbage disposals. Who knows? Let's see what we got next. Okay, well, instead of installing the deck, because I might want to wait, let's go ahead and see what is after that. Time to work on the main tower. Okay, cleanup on that is complete. You know those actually go together. All right. It's a slippery little edge to get purchase on. So this one, it's got two pins, just like that. The weird thing is this other side, that's like a butt join, but it's like two butt joints. Just super weird. Okay, so I am still fucking around with the new camera. Okay, so I'm still fucking around with the new camera, and when I was reviewing some of the footage, I noticed a little bit of like focus pulsing. So I have put it on manual focus, which should reduce that, and it just means I'll have to kind of work in a certain range to keep things from getting out of hand. But I have installed this B18 piece. I think we're looking good here. Now it's time to install the D1 and D2 bits. Just look like they just fit right there. Yeah, I want to knock that down just a little bit. It's a nice fit. Get to me extra thin. Okay, and so that gets us through step seven, and it's getting late, so I'm going to call it a night. And we'll pick back up in the manana. Okay, got all the parts removed. Let's go ahead and get these guys glued in place. I mean, they're literally a press fit, so it's not that big of a fit issue or anything. Okay, C7 goes up in here. I'm gonna guess that this is mounts for some sort of mast coming off the conning tower. Periscopes, maybe. Just literally sits on here like this. I'll take it. And then this thing, the painting guide shows it as a 
wooden deck piece, basically. So I am not going to glue this. I'm going to paint it separately, and then I can just place it on there, because it's basically just a press fit. And then per the instructions, we can now install the conning tower, but I'm not going to do that yet, because it's gray, and the entire deck is dark gray. That's a pleasant sound. There, we'll just set it there. How about that? Now, I would note in the instructions, there's also this part B7 if you wanted to have the hatch open and show the ladder down there and all that. I don't really want to, so I'm going to skip that part. All right, time to get to the back of the boat. These look like aft torpedo tubes, and then we've got the prop shafts. Okay, you know, it's going to be really tough to find a good working angle for this. <laughs> Holy shit. It's like working on a baseball bat. All right, because I can't literally get to the end of this thing, I'm gonna go ahead and do these and then show them off once they're installed. Okay, so it ain't pretty, but here we go with the propeller shafts and the various mounting points for them. Honestly, this is my least favorite part of the build so far. The mounting points for the shaft housings are little tiny indentations. I would love to see something a little beefier there and the whole join here, I don't know, it just feels a bit squirrely. Thankfully, it's on the bottom and the back of the boat, so not the worst outcome, I guess. Okay, so I took a bit of a time out to go ahead and glue the deck in place. Why? Because the gaps on the side were just too uneven and were frustrating me a little bit, and so I wanted to knock it out, and it took fucking clamps to make it happen. Not too big a deal. Uh, I'd probably do it a bit cleaner if I wasn't going so fast trying to get this thing done in two weeks, but I think it'll work. Also glued in a couple of little details back here, these little stack things, the U9 plaque, and Dust Work actually gives you four options for these plaques back here. So this is U9, but they also have U10, 11, and 12. Uh, did a bit of cleanup on the aft section here. Also did a bit of cleanup up front. Uh, I put in a little bit of a styrene shim to kind of fill that gap between the top of the deck and the bow. And I put some super glue down here and sanded it flush to deal with the bow seam. So that's where we are at. Now it is time to go back here and play on the back of the boat. So we're on currently on step 11 and basically we've got all these like outrigger things I, I don't know what they do maybe they're dock bumpers so that they don't damage the dive planes who knows anyway time to glue these in time to get the aft dive planes in but first i want to go ahead and knock out the lower rudder b6 now that little insert that i installed way back in step one Pretty sure, yep, that is designed to hold the rudder in place. Cool. So we can take that out for weathering or painting or whatnot as we need to. Now the top rudder, we have the option of going with either B35 or B36. I think B35 is bigger, so cool, let's do that. Nope, oh, that could be a... Never mind, we're gonna go with the other one because I just threw that one in super glue. Small rudder it is. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get this thing out of here so it doesn't fuck anything else up. All cleaned up and should just kind of shove in the way that the other one does. Yep. Happy rudder time. Okay, now let's deal with the dive planes. Okay, so I've gone ahead and removed and cleaned up the parts and they go onto these little holes right here on the side of the boat. Again, it's a press fit, so it'll be easy to remove these in the future for things like masking and painting and weathering. You don't have to worry about hurting them. Now let's install whatever these things are. Okay, so let's see how well these things sit in here. Oh, 
those sit in there pretty well, which means I might be able to get away with not gluing them too, at least until a bit later. Okay, so I've got these post things over here on the port side aft. Now let's go ahead and install them on the starboard side so you can see them. So C28 goes right in this middle one. Just like that, very complicated. C51, this one goes up front. And C52, which goes back here at the very end of the boat. Ta-da, those are fun. Okay, it's now time to think about turnbuckles. <sighs> and honestly, I'm not sure if I wanna tackle this just yet. A, because there are 16 called for. B, because if you look at the rear one here, the way that these work is they glue to these little fucking things, these little tiny circles on the outside of each of these arms. And they then attach to these plates up here and right here and here and here and whatnot. That's a big ask for drilling and mounting and all that fun stuff. I am gonna have to give that some thought. At present, I'm thinking just at the speed I'm building, that's not gonna happen, but it's possible. Maybe I'll get a bug up my ass about it here in the next couple sessions and it'll happen. Okay, but for now, I think we're in a good place on those. We'll come back to the torpedo doors. I don't know if I wanna have them open or closed yet. And so let's move over to the conning tower because we've got some stuff in here that we can glue in place and some stuff that we can just kind of put together for the time being. So when I was watching Andy's build of this thing, I had to confess at first he talked about not doing the rigging because he was going to wait for aftermarket stuff to come out. And I didn't understand what the fuck that meant because, you know, rigging line isn't exactly... Um, aftermarket that you have to wait on because it already exists. But what he's talking about, I presume, are the masts because these things are very flimsy and if you start putting tension on them, they're gonna definitely sag in a very plastic fashion, whereas a metal mast would hold up, you know, its rigidity and shape and all that. So I have to imagine that's what he's talking about. And if that's the case, I agree 100%. Um, I am not going to rig this because those things would go super floppy in a heartbeat and look terrible. The other thing is this thing doesn't want to seem to sit exactly square. It's kind of offset a little bit and that's due to a notch in the way that it installs. <sighs> Alright, I might have to live with that. Either way, I don't think I'm going to install these things all the way because I'm tempted to kind of come back and do rigging later myself if they come out with metal masts. So. Yeah. All right, next up we got C40 is the closer piece there. I think a lot of these tower parts I'm just gonna place because unless I'm mistaken, the deck areas are the same as the gray deck on the boat itself and the sides are the same light gray and it would just save a whole lot of masking hassle to paint these things separately and then drop them on. At least that's what makes sense in my head right now. Ink that guy out for the moment. See, that's a good press fit anyway, so let it hang out and do its thing. All right, C44. So it goes right here. that. Okay, more of what I assume are masts or periscopes or something going in here. They have uh, semi-circular mounts on them so they fit in a certain keyed way, which is convenient. It's just you can't see the damn things as you're installing them. So you just have to twirl it until it fits. And here we've got the wheel for the boat. Th 
this installs to this wooden deck that we're going to remove painting, so I'm just not going to touch that right now. And then we've got this C48 piece that I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a whistle. It goes right here. Get some extra thin in there and go to town. Okay, so that's a bunch of the conning tower built up. And it's getting late, so I'm gonna call it a night once again. Hopefully I will finish this thing up on the third night of building, which seems possible. Okay, let's go ahead and move around to the front of the boat. And since I decided to go ahead and glue the deck down, it's probably a good point to go ahead and deal with these B19 and B17 parts. And again, my total ignorance of U-boats is showing, and so I have no idea what these are. Uh, I'm gonna call them the lockers where they keep their sausages. So B-17 is the port side sausage locker. And it looks like it doesn't exactly line up with the deck, which is interesting because the deck fits the way it fits across the whole thing. And there is that gap up there that we had to fill and that looks like the exact distance between these things. So, hmm, not quite sure what's going on there. Because this is one of those things where you have an object that fits where it fits. Like it has holes in the back that fit into things in the hole and doesn't line up up front. Interesting, but I'm hesitant to put this on DOS work. This is entirely possibly something that is my fault from the speed at which I'm trying to build this thing. And maybe they're not meant to totally line up anyway. So it looks like in my haste to get to the rear dive planes and various accoutrements, I missed step 10. And curiously, these things are only labeled with the odd number for the steps, not the evens. But here we've got the four dive planes. We've got more of these little things sticking out for the rigging. We've got more C-43 little stack thingies. We've got 18, I don't know what C-18 is for. We've got another hatch right up front here. And we finally have the instructions for the machine gun mounts. Sweet, so let's go ahead and knock these out. Okay, so I've gone ahead and removed most of the parts, and now it's time to start gluing. First up, we've got the hatch. All right, got the hatch down. Now we get to put these little C-43 mass dealies up in the front. That's no bueno. I have no idea what this part is. It looks kind of like the thing they used to summon the Kraken in the second part of the Caribbean. But I don't know why you'd want to put that so close to the sausage lockers. And it's probably something boring like the uh, winch for the anchor chain or something, but whatever, that's more fun, right? All right, now the machine guns. Now these each had, as you can see here, a hole and the instructions show no hole there. So I filled it. A little bit tedious to do, but not too bad. Thankfully it's a nice big hole, so you can build a good depth of CA and then just sand it flat. 
And these just fit together like this. A little bit of extra thin in there to lock it together. Okay, let this set for a second. And then we'll put the barrels on them and they should be good to go. Stop stabbing myself with the tweezers for a hot minute. And let's go ahead and put in the dive planes on this side. So this is B33 going up top. Just like the, uh, and this B30 going underneath it, just like the rear, it's a nice press fit. So they are positionable. And they are removable. And we've got these little whatever thingies coming next to them. Just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and then we'll pick back up. Okay, so the dive planes and these little outrigger things are all placed, ready to be pulled off for painting. I've also got the machine guns installed. They look really pretty damn good. The ammo boxes could maybe use a bit of work, but I think the guns themselves really look the business. And I also went and placed the torpedo doors right here. These things basically have two little tabs that they kind of slide in from. Unfortunately, it's a really tricky angle to work. But, uh, you can kind of yank them back out as needed. You can see that we can work them loose and slide them back in. So that way I can get back in there and actually paint the, uh, the launch doors themselves. So yeah, we're just about ready for primer. We have a few more elements to include, and they are these C38 and C37 pieces, which I want to call mass, but they're installed horizontally, so I really don't know. And then these are obviously some sort of mast, and the way that they install with these little plates, C30, C39, and then C25 and C26, I'm tempted to leave those off because they're gonna go on this portion of the hole right here that needs to be painted gray, and, or like dark gray, and they are the light gray that matches, you know, the sides. So, I can either put them on and then mask around them, or I can leave them off, paint them separately, and then install them later. I think for strength I'm tempted to put them on, but at the same time I'm tempted to leave them off because I don't want to mask it. But let's focus for now on the C37 and C38 bits. Okay, so let's go ahead and test fit these and see how they look. Well, it's a good thing these are super fucking squirrely. I think I'm gonna have to glue these. They're so quick to flip over. Yeah, I'm gonna have to glue those. There's no way that they're, they're way too fucking floppy. Yeah, these things are really squirrely to fit just because they are so fucking small and those little tabs don't really do much. I think this is one where it would have been nice if we had an actual hole to place these into. Instead we've got this. Okay, so I decided to go ahead and install the mounting plates for the port side mast, both fort and aft, mainly because the positive location on them isn't great and I'd probably fuck it up if I tried to glue them in after they were painted. So. They're there now, and with that, we're pretty much at the end of main construction. The only things that I haven't installed that have to go on are the screws, which have a very shallow mounting point. And so there's really no point to install them yet because they're a completely different color than everything else. So I will paint them and install them later. 
and then the life preservers that go on the conning tower, at least on the canvas wrapped version. So they will go there, but these are orange. Pretty vastly different color from the rest of everything, right? And so I'll probably just shove a toothpick in there to hold them, paint them up, and install them later on. The conning tower itself and the cage around the top is interchangeable with just straight up metal railings. Don't know which one I'll keep yet. It'll probably honestly come down to how I like them when they're painted up. Uh, a lot of parts on here are removable for painting, including these masts, this mast, the periscopes, the entire conning tower, these little bell things, the dive planes on both fore and aft, all these little outrigger bits, the rudders, all that stuff can pop off to make painting easier. So, yeah. Okay, so now that it's together, what do I make of DOSWorks kit? Well, with the caveats that I haven't built ships in quite a while, and I know squat all about World War I U-boats, so I can't comment at all about the accuracy of this thing. I think overall what we have here is a shockingly low parts count build that is well detailed, builds fast, and honestly is a pleasure to build. There are a couple of sticking points. Uh, getting the holes together happens, but it takes a bit more grip strength than I was expecting. Not a deal breaker at all, just kind of watch out for it. The deck doesn't quite fit as well as I would like. See the filling up there with a bit of styrene shim. There's a little bit of filling on the stern too, nothing really bad. And I mean, honestly, these are the easier places to access on the boat to do some cleanup operations. So I'd rather have them there than having to like fight in this area. Uh, I like that a lot of these pieces can be easily popped off and popped back on, like the dive planes and the conning tower, the interchangeable cages. That stuff is great. It'll make painting a lot easier. It'll make um, not only just not having, not having a mask, but being able to like pick these things up and do detailed weathering and stuff on them. Nice to see. Um, so yeah, overall, this is a really solid kit. And honestly, it's hard to find any major complaints with it that aren't probably caused by builder error and speed. The only ones that really come to mind are the less than positive location points for certain things like, you know, these antenna mounts, the shaft housings, some of like, you know, th these little tripody things. Th they're very shallow and you basically have to drop the Tamiya's, drop the Tamiya extra thin and then kind of like work things into place. Nothing deal breaking, but it would have been nice, you know, to have like actual holes or things like that. So that's one, that's one complaint. The other complaint that I have is that these masts are way too floppy to handle any kind of actual rigging. Uh, you know, even Easy Line or the equivalents from like Ushi or Infini, any level of tension on these things is gonna pull them in all kinds of directions. And that makes it really frustrating to go out there and rig this thing up. And I mean, even these little outriggers down here, they're a bit more solid just because they're shorter, but they still they still wiggle and waggle all over the place. So I do anticipate at some point aftermarket coming out with various brass masts and whatnot to handle all that rigging. I also wouldn't be surprised if we see some aftermarket like photo etch or things like that, just to kind of you know spiff up some of these things, some of like the mounts for these little whatever those horizontal bars are. I don't know if they're master antennas or what. Uh, hell, they could be fucking whale harpoons for all I know. But the mounts there, I have a feeling they're probably a bit more detailed in real life. So yeah, I could see photo etch doing a lift here as well. Overall, though, a really solid kit and a really pretty unique subject. From what I understand, this is the first time that a U9 has been kitted in plastic. And given the popularity of German subjects in general, that's really surprising. But uh, it's an interesting thing to see, and you know, World War I naval subjects don't get all that much love, so it's interesting from that perspective as well. So if you have any interest in boats or ships of any kind, uh, this is definitely one I think worth checking out. 
And so with that, I'm gonna shut this down and we will pick back up in the next video with priming and painting this rather large beast. Check you later.